We have restructured our programs around the city-led networks that address common challenges and spread the best ideas. And today, over 80% of the C40 cities are participating in at least one of these networks. We've placed five regional directors around the globe to provide direct support, support to help cities achieve their goals. We've established performance-based criteria for membership, including the crucial first step of tracking and reporting emissions, so that being a C40 city really does stand for something. We've expanded our membership with a specific focus on the global south, where most of the world's new megacities will be. As our organization has grown, so has our role on the world stage. At the Copenhagen Climate Change Convention back in 2009, cities were largely excluded from the conversation. Today, the international community is looking to cities, and especially to C40 cities, for leadership on climate change. That is just an amazing turnaround, that the world is taking notice of the work C40 cities are doing. And as well it should, after all. If C40 cities were a country, together we'd be the world's third largest population and second largest economy. We really do represent a very large percentage of the public, and that's going to grow with time. As we all know, 50% of the public lives in big cities, and 20 years, something like 70% are projected to live in big cities. And although I'll be stepping down as chair, uh, I'm happy to be honored to serve as president of the C40 board. I was also recently appointed by the United Nations Secretary General uh, Ban Ki-moon to be his special envoy for cities and climate change, and it's an honor to serve in that role. The Secretary General clearly recognized the important part cities can play in reducing emissions and building resiliency worldwide. And the impact cities can have on the ability of our nations to reach ambitious climate goals cannot be understated. South Africa, South Africa's approach to climate change flows from the National Change Response Policy. The policy framework aims to reduce the rate at which the country contributes to climate change, with a special focus on a reduction in greenhouse gas emissions and developing adequate responses to the impacts on society. As a country and as a people, we acknowledge that in fact, whilst we are a society that continues to consume energy and consume electricity that is generated through coal, there is a need to transition towards alternative fuels. Currently, a process is underway in the country to ensure that as we pick towards our coal utilization, we're able to get to the point where in the early parts of the next decade, we can start to see a significant reduction in the need for coal-generated power in our country. At this stage, I wish to draw your attention briefly to the fact that the city of Johannesburg has taken decisive steps towards transit-oriented development. And through this, we want to promote the use of public transport, cycling and walking, and reduce our dependence on public transport use.